Hello, World Seed community, and thanks for joining us today for this live Q&A session. Now, wherever you are joining from, and whatever time it may be in your area, there is one thing that unites us all. It's 24 days to go until the opening of the World Seed Congress in Cape Town, which will be taking place from the 5th to the 7th of June, 2023. I'm John Paul Judson, and I have the pleasure of guiding you through this Q&A session, but particularly also, I am looking forward to meeting you all in Cape Town. Now, there are many reasons why you should be joining this Congress, but aside from all the business and trading that brings seed people from around the world together for three days, you will also get the opportunity to hear from leading voices in the seed sector, in the agri-food value chain, and in policymaking, voices that are shaping the debate on regulatory and policy matters of direct relevance to plant breeding and seed production. Today, we have the ISF technical team joining us from the ISF headquarters in Switzerland. Hello to the team. They will be giving us a glimpse into the panel sessions that will be taking place in South Africa. So if you are working in policy, or regulatory affairs, this will definitely be of interest to you. But if you are working in business development or research or trading, I would say maybe even more so, because in a very short, condensed period of time, these panels will provide you with a lot of information to help you anticipate the future of the business. So before we go a little bit deeper into each of the different panels, um, can I just ask Michael first, how is the Congress shaping up? Where are we at? What are we to expect in South Africa? Thanks so much, Jean-Paul. Really great to see you. Very excited. I'm so excited to go there by, by your words. First of all, hello to everybody. And I think, as you said, 24 days we have to go. Shared root, greater height. Roots, greater heights. That's what we are looking for. I think we are knowing from where we are coming. We know the importance of the seed business. And in recent years, we understood also, it's even more important than perhaps many of you saw also, we are increasing, increasingly facing hunger in the world. Just last week, a new report was published. I think we have to engage. We have to engage together. And as you mentioned, the whole seed community is coming to South Africa. When I'm saying the whole seed community, it's absolutely exciting that we had a dream some years back to gather together perhaps 900,000 people perhaps in South Africa, but we will be nearly 1,300 seed people from over 56 countries joining us on site. It's absolutely exciting to see we had even to add trading tables. What means adding trading tables means also more business. That means also in Africa, more business is happening and more opportunities. And I think in this sense, it's exciting to see that we can build engagement and we are looking to build engagement because also the whole range of seed actors from around the world is coming to see, hey, we are in Africa. What is also our future, perhaps business opportunity in Africa? And therefore, diversity of seed people from Africa are coming. I would just to highlight, you know, also representatives from Malawi, from Rwanda, from Zambia, and many, many other countries from Africa are joining us, Senegal, for instance, or Nigeria. I think this is also showing there is some dynamics. We need more dynamics. Shared routes, greater heights, more people, no, more diversity. In a couple of days, we all will be there. Totally exciting. And now let's discuss also the panels because it's also about content in Cape Town. Okay, so a lot of interest, uh, clearly, and indeed it's the opportunity to shine a light on all the activities uh, in Africa in relation to plant breeding, seed production, uh, but also then obviously to address these big global challenges that are common to the whole seed sector around the world. So there are a number of panels that we will be going through uh, in, uh, in Cape Town. We'll be going through each of these uh, right now. Obviously, for those who are in Cape Town, well, you'll be able to follow them live in the room. They will also be uh, live streamed through the channel World Seed. So for those people who, who will be attending online, you will also be able to get a glimpse on all of these discussions. 
Um, so I'd like to go first then to this first panel, how to enhance farmers' access to quality seed in Africa. Ilen, this is a panel that you have been thinking about, you have been building. Um, why is this panel important? And why are we talking about this now at, at the Congress? Thank you, Jean-Paul. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, this is a very important panel uh, for ISF because we are going to be in Africa and it's probably one of the continents where access to quality seeds for farmers is really a struggle. So we wanted to see how we can uh, help build a more well, resilient and sustainable system for farmers to access quality seed. And we will have very um, interesting uh, introduction, first of all, uh, by AFSTA. The president of AFSTA will be there, um, Kulani, to present us the, the state of uh, access to quality seeds for farmers in Africa. Uh, the panel will also be an opportunity to showcase many initiatives which are taking place in Africa. And I'm thinking particularly of a new initiative where ISF is engaged with the NGO uh, Fair Planet. We are going to um, present you a bit more how uh, Rwanda is the place where we are going to act together and where seed companies can also be involved. And this will be a great opportunity also to to help seed companies to maybe see how they can be uh, more engaged uh, concretely. We will also um, have a very interesting perspective from a farmer because it's also very important to have their voice. Uh, and uh, also it will be the, uh, the new um, organization called One CGIR uh, present with us. We know the CGIR for many, many years, but now they are really reshaping the way they are working uh, to uh, really shape the, the regulator, help shape the regulatory system for farmers, especially uh, in Africa. So this will be, I guess, a very interesting panel, and it will be indeed the first one of uh, Monday uh, afternoon. So we will really start the Congress with showing uh, what is the situation in Africa and how we can all work together for farmers. Okay, brilliant. So that, that'll be a first panel that already sets the scene that, you know, many of the topics that we'd be doing, dealing with, we will be looking at the specific African context around that topic. Um, but at the same time, we also keep an eye on the, on the global picture. There's another panel that you're involved with, uh, Hélène, which is, I think, rather provocatively entitled, Is There a Role for Breeders in UPOV 91? Um, which sounds like a very bizarre question because UPOV seems to be rather built for breeders. So why are you questioning whether there is a role for breeders in UPOV? Yes, thank you, Jean-Paul. So this panel will take rather um, yeah, a higher perspective. We are not, uh, we will of course discuss about Africa and we have the great pleasure to have uh, Patrick from Tanzanian PVP office with us. Uh, but we will take really a higher perspective to see what is the role of breeders in implementation of UPOV 91, because we've been questioning in the last month or the recent years at least, um, really how we can work together. Uh, we feel that there is a bit of distance between PVP offices and uh, the private seed sector. So we really want to see how we can better work together. As we said, a UPOF system was made and was proposed by the breeding community. And we really want it to be still a powerful IP tool to protect innovation, uh, to deliver quality seeds to farmers once more. So what can we do better? And we will also have the great pleasure to welcome Peter Button, who is the current Vice Secretary General of UPOV, but retiring very soon in the coming month. And he will reflect on his 20 years uh, of engagement at UPOV Secretariat and how he has been working with the private sector. And we will be very happy also to get his perspective uh, on how we can do it better. So we want to learn from them. And that's why we have two PVP offices with us, the Tanzanian one, as I said, who will give the African perspective on IP, but also uh, the Japanese uh, PVP office, very involved uh, and working very closely with the plant breeding sector. So we are very happy. 
and uh, we will get also the, the perspective from a breeder. Uh, Marima will be with us from South America, providing again also her, her perspective. So it will be a very interesting panel who will definitely shape the discussions that will take place in ISF uh, in the coming months and years. Uh, because UPOV is a great tool. This is really the favorite tool uh, for ISF members to protect their varieties. But we need to make sure it remains uh, a great tool in the coming years. So that's why we are very eager to, to talk about this topic. And this is obviously a key, a key topic for anyone thinking about the development of new varieties, which is obviously the core business of the seed sector. So, you know, please bear this panel in mind. Uh, and indeed, we will also have the, the 20 year reflections of Peter Button. So a lot of interesting information very likely in this in this panel. Thank you, Hélène. Um, if you have questions on either on either panel or more generic questions, type them in and we'll be taking them on board. That's the whole purpose of, of being live. So I, I'm checking all these comments and I will definitely um, you know, put them to our, to our uh, ISF secretariat. Now I will now turn to Rose. Rose is in charge of a couple of panels as well at the World Seed Congress. Now the first one I'd like to talk about is digitalization in the agri supply chain. So this is quite a broad, big picture view on the whole agri-food supply chain in relation to digitalization. What are you expecting from this panel, Rose? Well, uh, thank you so much for, for the question, John Paul. I really expect that uh, we can learn a lot from all the different uh, organizations that uh, we have been lucky to be present on this panel. I think there is a lot happening on this particular sector, which has been highlighted since the pandemic of COVID-19. Digitalization tools has already happening for a long time, but actually it has got much more um, much more known by everybody, much more promotion since what's happened with the COVID because we wanted to continue moving plant and plant products and to be able to reach all the farms across the world. And actually it was digitalization that helped that support this to happen during such a difficult time. We are expecting to learn the lessons that is already happening on many different organizations. We have Leanne Jackson from OECD, where she will talk about the efforts of that particular organization with digitalization, but also some reports that they will be preparing that will be of great knowledge and information for us as the seed sector. We also will be having a representative from IPPC, we have Mr. Craig Fetchock, which will be talking about the electronic phytosanitary certification, something that is incredibly important for us because when we move seeds, we do need our phytosanitary certification to be able to reach the countries of sale or even the countries of re-exports when we are moving our products. And we'll be hearing as well from a, a, someone from the Dutch government, but he will be representing Codex and he'll be talking about all the Codex activities and even a little bit as well from the veterinary, from the animal side. So we have Eric Bosker. He'll be talking about all his experience and knowledge on this particular topic. He has been working for many, many years on this. And we also will have someone from a private company working with blockchains, which is Mr. Alexander. So he'll be representing SS Docs and he'll be talking about the technology behind and how much this technology has advanced and is still will advance. So it will be important for all them, our members to be able to hear all the different technology that is coming and how this can support the movement of seeds. And finally, we'll have a CEO of Bayo Anza, John Peter, which he will talk from the business perspective side, how important it is to have digital tools to be able to facilitate business, how some of the current challenges can be removed by having digitalization on our side. So really, we are expecting uh, to learn a lot and to be a very open discussions, not just about seed, but about how we move plant and plant products across the whole supply chain. Yeah, and this might also maybe challenge even uh, the, the seed community to hear about some of the uh, digital tools being used in, in other sectors. So is that also something that you'd like to get out of this panel that, that the seed community you know, reflects on what it could also do better in terms of its relationship either with, with public control or, or within the movement of seed internally? Absolutely. I think there is a great opportunity to share the information, to get to know more, so increase the knowledge and perhaps even be able to use some of these tools, which I use for other sectors to be able to be used for us. 
And I think that the, this is the beauty of having digital tools is that it's not specific for just one sector. It can be used to others. And why not to be able to be of a great uh, enhancement and tool for the seed sector to be able to continue doing its business. Okay, brilliant. So that will be a focus on digitalization. There is another panel that you're involved with, Rose, which is phytosanitary frameworks and strategies in Africa and beyond plant health, seed health. Why are these issues vital for the seed sector and why should people come to listen to these speakers on the panel? Well, uh, as much as we want to talk about all the other very important topics, actually, if you do not meet the phytosanitary requirements of the country you're trying to move your seeds, I'm afraid that your seeds is not going to be able to, to pass. So for us, phytosanitary requirements is very important, and I think we needed to address some of the current challenges, some of the disharmonization and additional declaration, and some other issues that we are facing every time we wanted to move the seeds from the different countries. So to be able to understand and to hear from representatives from the World Bank, so Shane Seller talking about all the efforts that the World Bank is having in Africa on trying to implement not just uh, the trade facilitation agreement, but also the sanitary and phytosanitary agreement, which is the SPS agreement. I think having an understanding of which kind of frameworks are already happening in Africa and how other organizations such as the World Bank is doing has making an impact and which kind of strategies we want to be looking forward, but not just on the African continent, but also outside. I think this is going to be a great learning for us all. And hopefully to be able to have build, build this bridge between the private and the public sector as well. This is why organizations like the World Bank is so important. We also are going to be hearing from the head of the SCDF, which is housed at the World Trade Organization. So Mr. Melvin Spray, he'll be talking as well all the different projects that the SCDF is already uh, funding in Africa and what more this can be done, of course, with the support of the private seed sector. Another person that will be with us is a representative of the World Vegetable Center, and he will give a much more broad and perhaps even local view because he is based in Africa, so he can tell exactly which kind of issues and then what is happening on the different countries, how much phytosanitary challenges it is really important for some African countries, but also how much we can collaborate and work together to be able to solve some of them. And finally, we have David Malan, which is the CEO of a, a seed company based in South Africa. And so this is going to be really interesting because he will be able to share with everybody firsthand, which is his experience, his challenge, his difficulties. And to be able to share this, we can all work together and we can see which will be the strategies we can, of course, with the support of ISAF and all the seed sector. And David, who, who definitely, you know, made a mark of, of inviting people to, to Cape Town, I recall, uh, last year in, in Barcelona, he made a great appeal to the seed community to come over. Uh, so that will be a that will be a really interesting, interesting panel and indeed really vital to the to the movement of seed to ensure that these phytosanitary frameworks are as harmonized as possible. So if you sometimes struggle with moving seed around the world, this panel might be for you. Uh, so, you know, mark it in your diary. Another topic then, if I turn to Ben, we have a panel on the value chain, agri-food chain value opportunities in Africa and beyond. So why are we talking about value chain approaches here? What does this actually mean, Ben, and why should people attend this panel? Thank you, Jean-Paul, and greetings, everyone. A great opportunity indeed to explain further what we want to achieve with this uh, panel session. We do have indeed the opportunity to, to bring some great speakers on board for this uh, specific panel on uh, the engagement also of the seed industry within the agri-food value chains. And value chains is a very broad concept, and we also want to look at that from different perspectives, from different crop types, but also from different geographical zones. So that's why we'll have a focus on Africa indeed, but we will be looking beyond that, within a global perspective. But first of all, when we talk about agri-food uh, value chain, uh, everything starts with seeds, but with farmers. So we'll have a chance to bring a farmer representative, Stephen, uh, from Africa, that will also explain the added value of high quality seeds and new improved variety into the uh, value chain, and explain also how the um, uh, systems 
ecosystem around distributing food uh, is organized or should be organized, taking some uh, examples from his country or from the continent. But we also want to bring uh, some other players, producers and retailers, taking the opportunity of having a very active uh, potato companies in South Africa, with really explaining how uh, the distribution of food and potato in that case is organized in South Africa with food distributors, food retailers to reach out uh, final consumers. And this is a very important uh, element, but because when it comes to distribution of fresh produce, it's important to have a very well organized uh, ecosystem around the producing area, but also to reach out uh, the consumer where they are. That's why the global perspective will be interesting in that sense. And Tamara uh, will be there to explain also from her experience and expertise from the fresh produce industry, but also with the sustainability angle, how in all the countries, in all the part of the world, the agri-food system around fresh produce is organized. And this is a very important also uh, element to take into consideration when we talk about efficiency of agri-food system. We will also bring uh, Gerald uh, from uh, Kenya that will explain uh, the uh, role of grain trading, how it is uh, organized in uh, Eastern Africa on the continent, but also with a very interesting um, perspective from a global angle. And we know that grain commodities is also a very important topic uh, today. So that will be very interesting to look at what is the situation today in terms of movement of grains within this uh, industry and how the seed also sector, seed industry is playing a role uh, in that respect. We'll end with um, also a testimonial from a national seed association, Rachel from, from France. She will also explain uh, the different uh, initiatives taken at the country level within a regional dynamic, uh, also with her background working in uh, with cooperative agribusiness uh, fora to see what is currently being done from a country, but also what could be next within an international scope. And that's also why we will explain in the scope of some new working groups within ISF, with ISF members, both on the sustainability angle, but on the engagement of the seed sector within the uh, value chain, how the seed industry is playing an important role as a starting point, but also how the seed sector is willing to engage further with some identified uh, stakeholders and actors uh, to be more visible, more active, um, and also uh, part of the game uh, when we talk about agri-food uh, value chain. So a lot of interesting insight from different perspectives, as you can see. So happy to uh, welcome all of you on site or online uh, to also address some of the questions you might have in terms of your uh, perspective and business. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, because it's uh, it's already a big job to actually get to a performing variety and to, to get that seed, you know, multiplied and produced. Uh, and then it's still another job to ensure that there is, in fact, an end market in the end uh, for those crops, for those products that result from the seed. And the seed sector also has a role to play there. Um, but it's a lot of work. Uh, and so that's also why this panel is important, because we all need to think about how do we achieve this level of value chain cooperation beyond the lab, if I may say. Um, so uh, that's, that's an important one. So mark that one in your diaries. And talking about labs, talking about research, let's then go to Hola's panel, uh, plant breeding innovation, hopes, dreams, and reality. I quite like this title, you know, hopes, dreams, and reality. I hope reality is as close as possible uh, to hopes and dreams, but I don't know, maybe you think that's not quite the case. Haola, why is this panel important? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. So, as you know, innovation is, is, is critical for the seed sector because um, breeders need to take uh, farmer demands and consumer demands into consideration. And why are we talking about hopes, dreams, and reality? Because we want to walk 
the panel through through different angles from for plant breeding innovation. As you know, breeding is not a new science, is not a um, simple process, is not a rapid process, but with the advent of new genome editing technologies since more than a decade ago, um, the breeder toolbox has expanded and we are able to, to, do, to create novel traits efficiently and in a targeted manner in genome um, with a rapid process. So um, to date, we have really plants um, with novel traits made by genome editors already um, on the market. And we invited several panelists from the industry, from public research, from the um, policy sector, and also from the consumer to, to discuss all this, to share their experiences, knowledges, opportunities around plant breeding innovation. So. Um, First, the first act aspect that we will discuss is with Henny Gronewald from uh, Biosafety South Africa. He will he will guide us uh, around the regulation in South Africa. Then we will have uh, the head of Auda Nepad. Um, he will he will talk us about the regulation in Africa in general. And then we have the opportunity to have Dan Jenkins, VP. Regulatory and government affair of a company in the US called Paywise. They have a really an exciting product that is already coming into the market. So it's a fresh produce. So he will talk about this and we will have the consumer experience with um, Stephanie van der Waal. She is from the International Fresh Produce in South Africa. And finally, we will get the state of the science in South Africa by Bernard Slippers, who is a professor at the University of Pretoria. So this, uh, all panelists will give us uh, the dynamic in various global and uh, regional jurisdictions. And um, really we want to have an understanding how the global seed sector can change the, these dreams, hopes into the reality. And as you know, there are a lot of challenges around this, especially when it comes to plant breeding innovation and genome editing in particular. Okay, a lot of challenges indeed. So we'll try and address those in, uh, in, in an hour uh, in Cape Town. We'll do our best to get the most out of these panels, but indeed it's a, it's a challenging topic. Um, but thanks for, for giving us that overview. Um, and then we move to the, what will be in fact the last panel of the, of the World Seed Congress, the annual forum of seed business leaders. Uh, Michael, can you tell us a little bit about that? I know it's a bit of a, a, a tradition uh, at the World Seed Congress. So what can we expect in Cape Town this year? Yeah, thanks so much, Tom. Well, I think for us, it's really interesting. We started this um, high level business um, panel in Nice some years back. And it was totally exciting to, to get really feedback of the diversity of business leaders we have on yeah, what is their vision. And, and somehow even what is the mission of the company? And, and let me start like this, this piece. Perhaps, um, yes, perhaps companies have different vision missions, but at the end, we have all one vision. And that's the joint vision of the seed sector, making seeds accessible to all farmers. And I think the exciting one is, hey, we are in Africa. We could speak about all the challenges we have. We know we have many challenges and the companies have many challenges to provide seed choice to farmers in Africa, for instance. But let's turn it in the way, let's think about exactly how can we together build this seed resilience for farmers in Africa. You heard from Helen, we have an access to seed um, um, panel in the beginning. You just heard about the dreams of Kaola to make also somehow we need innovation, but it's not innovation for innovation, it's innovation to support smallholders, subsistence farmers in Africa and everywhere in Africa. And therefore, is it not exciting to listen to two business leaders from Africa, with Amadou and Sylvia, who are leading companies in Uganda, or in Senegal, but working not only nationally, but also regionally in Africa on a diversity on crops to listen, hey, what is the reality today? What is handicapping perhaps also these companies to provide seed choice to farmers? What are the needs of the farmers um, for the future? But more interesting is also how they see market 
evolving during the next, not only months, it's years. And I think this is interesting also in the seed business and therefore exciting also to, to share this with the most of the people. Seed business is not a short-term business. Seed business, business is a long-term business with investments. You start many, many years before you're bringing them to the market. And this market access, there it's interesting to listen to instance to Marco and, and Bupen, who are business leaders of companies acting globally. And globally acting is also, yeah, it's interesting. It's like benchmarking. They can tell us, hey, how is it in South America? How is it in Europe? How is it perhaps in Australia or North America? Yeah, but how is it also in Africa? Is it difficult to access the market? Where would they like to go on the market? But they can perhaps not go to the market because there's no enabling business environment. Or is it difficult to go to the market in Africa? because they have no human resources there. How you can start build up also as a globally leading seed company business in Africa. That's what we're looking for. It's about sustainability, but sustainability also in the sense of business sustainability. It's about investing. Yes, we need to invest more. But this investment makes only sense if it's also at the end sustainably, also business-wise for those for whom we are mainly investing. Farmers. That means this access for farmers, this capacity of choice for farmers is the critical one. And therefore, there will certainly be also some discussions about the regulatory oversight um, in Africa, perhaps also in some key countries. And this is where we are looking for to get insights from African business leaders, but also from business leaders acting around the world. But again, all of them have one vision, one vision making seed accessible to all farms. Okay, brilliant. So we'll be hearing from business leaders on that vision. Um, we'll be hearing from a lot of business leaders across all panels. Uh, but as I said, it's not just about business. It's also about getting views from research, from policymakers uh, across the whole spectrum. Um, I would like to raise one question with each of you there at the ISF Secretariat, because we, we've been insisting on the fact that we are looking at these topics also in the context of, of the African dynamics around plant breeding and, and seed production. And I wanted to hear from you in the, in the run-up, in the preparation to each of the panels that you are working on. Can you maybe reflect on something that you have learned, something that maybe surprised you or something that you know, you, you just didn't know before about that context uh, that you might want to share with our audience. Also, I think to just trigger a little bit of interest, because if you get to know something new, very likely people in the audience will get to learn something new as well. So could you maybe share one little nugget of something that you've learned in your various topics as you are approaching uh, these panels? Can I start with Ben? Good, thanks. Yeah, I, I will say one word uh, to answer your question is about diversity. And what was really interesting in preparing this Congress and especially this panel was to also um, look at the diversity of uh, countries uh, and how, you know, the North and the South and the East and the West are in some perspective completely different, but bringing this um, opportunity to you know, build on this complementarity in terms of uh, uh, structure, but also in terms of uh, geographical climatic condition, um, and also the way that you know different in my uh, context, agri-food uh, ecosystem and value chains are organized that all have their specificity and, and capacity. But diversity also in terms of um, actors and players. Here, you know, interesting to look at the number of farmers uh, that are involved in all the process, either organized in cooperative, either organized in small companies, family kind of uh, farming, and also diversity of actors around those farmers um, in terms of uh, enterprise business. Uh, that could be very small companies just acting in one region, in one country. That could be a national uh, company that do have a bigger outreach. That could be 
continental or even international uh, companies, especially in the seed sector, where we do see a diversity of uh, enterprise companies, SME, large multinational, and that's what is creating this you know, good value for everyone, because everyone is playing a key role in his uh, domain of competencies, domain of uh, area. And same for plant breeding activities in cooperation with the public sector that do also have their role to play in terms of bringing the best uh, new improved variety and at the end, uh, quality seeds to, to the farm. So I think that was an interesting learning from this diversity in terms of a geographical business perspective that at the end, as Michael mentioned, serve for the same purpose to produce food uh, enough for everyone to um, to be able to also have a living out of that, uh, to feed the population around the village, around the country, around the continent, and around the globe, that and to uh, help to end hunger uh, all over the, the world. I mean, especially in being in Africa, that was an interesting uh, focus there. Okay, so people can definitely expect to get um... A, a broad diversity of perspectives and maybe perspectives that they haven't necessarily considered before or, or, or heard about before that much. So that will be an interesting one. How about Rose? Is there something that you were surprised by or learned in the context of this preparation? Well, uh, I would say that is the extent of the number of interests and activities that happen on both topics of the panels that I have been directly involved. I think there is a number of initiatives, a number of interests from the very different uh, sectors in private. And so I think that will be really interesting to bring this all into context in Cape Town for everybody to see that it is not just, uh, uh, they are not issues from one particular sector, but for many. And everybody is really interested and very passionate in, and really wanted to take both topics going forward. So I'm really looking forward to see this exchange of knowledge, exchange of experiences, and of course, building relationships and cooperation going forward. Okay, so more on the on the projects, the 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 operational side, the the responses that are being uh, taken by different actors to to find solutions to help facilitate uh, seat movement. Okay, that's a good one. Ilen, uh, anything that you've learned, maybe also specifically for, from the African context, particularly uh, in in the context of the the preparation for your panels. Well, I would say that um, the world would be enthusiasm. Uh, I've been organizing ISF panels since many years, and I think it was one of the easiest year. Uh, everything went very smoothly in the organization of panels, and really all the speakers were super enthusiastic to come uh, to South Africa and to, to share their experience. Uh, ISF has not been in Africa since many, many years. I don't 20. 20 years yeah. uh, since we've been to Africa. And we could really feel um, the great enthusiasm for people from all around the world to come to South Africa. So that's what I would take. And I'm sure it would be a great Congress. OK, we'll be translating that enthusiasm in the, in the room, I am sure. Um, Khaula, you. You, it, it will be your first uh, congress, I, I believe. So, how how are you approaching this? What have you learned in this in this process that you think the audience might also learn? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, for me, it was really interesting to see the interest from the different parties. Um, so, the industry, the public sector, the, the consumer from the value chain, and also the policy actor was was very nice. They were engaging and they want to come to South, to South Africa to discuss with us all the challenges, all the, the, the opportunities that are behind plant breeding innovation. So um, it's really nice to, to bring them all together, bring all the actors and discuss how can we improve the system? How can we improve the regulation? How, what are the best regulatory framework maybe for Africa, maybe globally? and how the consumer are facing these new technologies, whether it is um, they are happy because, as you know, the consumers are somehow acceptance and uh, expectation are regional. 
and there is no there is no global consumer acceptance on this so it was it was really a very nice experience to me as this is my first panel that i'm organizing with isf so okay brilliant so we have uh, diversity we have concrete projects we have enthusiasm we have regulation that is impressively scattered <laughs> i'll put it this way um, so that's a lot of reasons to, to, to attend. Michael, uh, I don't know how many congresses you've been uh, involved with. I don't know how many, you know, but you, maybe you can let us know. What makes this one, or what has made this one special so far in the preparation of these panels and in this very specific context that where we will be in, in Africa? Yeah, thanks so much. There's not so many congresses I made. Huh? I think it's only the eighth one. But um, first of all, um, let me start perhaps with our slogan, um, shared roots, greater heights, um, because, and I will link because I need to add something different from, from my colleagues here. And for me, the first thing, and then allow me to use also this, this moment, um, first of all, shared roots, thanks to our colleagues in South Africa. The shared roots, the shared values to organize together with the South African Seed Association, this conference. It's, it's terrific what they were able to do in terms of bringing people there, bringing sponsorship. I think that's really something really important. But let me add two words. It's curiosity and continuity. And continuity is for me also by preparing the panel, listening to, to some of the panelists and preparing the whole conference is, is this continued commitment of the seed sector in challenging environment to provide seeds to farmers. Yes, we had COVID, but now we have major challenges from climate change and, and, and even disruptive moments in terms of seed supply. But there was always this engagement and this willing, this will to uh, continue to provide seeds, even in a difficult environment. And when I'm speaking difficult environment, yes, there are also discussions about the regulatory um, environment that we have in which we have to work on. Therefore, continued commitment. And at the same time, curiosity, the sense of curiosity to see how many people are coming to Africa, but also when you listen to the business leaders, yeah, they would like to understand Africa. What can I do there? I'm hearing a lot of uh, business leaders from Asia, for instance, who would like to understand, hey, are there business opportunities also in Africa? Um, and I think that's the interesting one. That's also where we think the Seed Congress is this unique and inspiring moment where we can fill gaps of understanding of what is happening in the country, but also build new relationships and opportunities for our members. And, and I think, therefore, yes, continuity. That's also, I'm coming back. We are continuing to innovate. We are continuing to provide seeds and all this. But at the same time, yeah, curiosity. Yeah, we need new solutions. We know it. We need to continue to innovate. Different innovations are needed. But at the same time, yes, in terms of business opportunities, but also the whole business environment, which is changing. And I think that the capacity of the seed sector is really related also to our capacity to stay curious. Okay, brilliant. We'll, we'll, we'll end on that note of curiosity. Uh, thank you so much for having uh, shared the, the insights on the panels, uh, expectations on the panels, you know, also learnings in the run up to the panels. So hopefully that gives a lot of uh, food for thought for people uh, wondering whether they should be attending the panels. I think it becomes obvious, not just because it's a fantastic location, uh, but also because there is fantastic content being prepared for you. There have been people joining from the Netherlands, from Pakistan, from Bangladesh, from Cameroon, from Nigeria, India, Afghanistan, South Africa, Indonesia. Uh, I see Sweden as well. So thank you all for, for joining this session. Um, I would say uh, now that it's time to register if you have not done so yet. You go to congress.worldseed.org, check everything out on that website. All the information is there. You can still register until May 26th. Uh, oh. It's been a great pleasure to take part in this q and I'd like to give a final view of the ISF uh, Secretariat and maybe give them the final word. For me, it's see you very soon in Cape Town. Join us. Come. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye.